Welcome back to the Who's Change. We talk everything Canada soccer and U.S. soccer. Tonight we, we're going to be covering Canada's World Cup qualifying match between them and El Salvador. Where in this one, La Who's gets another 2-0 victory over La Selecta. And I mean, hey, can we officially say it yet? Unofficially, unofficially, uh, what was it unofficially, officially say it yet that Canada will be in Qatar, even though it's not mathematically confirmed yet? I mean, can we just say it? But I mean, before I get to the to this game, I mean, can we just look at Canada overall and say, look, they got a nine-point window, uh, a rarity, first of all, in CONCACAF for a Canadian national team without Alfonso Davies, and they beat the U.S. 2-0, which hasn't been done since 1980. I mean, what more can you give for this team in order to give respect? So, I mean... I don't know, nine points, they basically 2 0 their way through this entire window without Alfonso Davies. And haters, hey, hey, say it. Come on, haters, where you at? You, you can't hate on this team. You can only hate on this team for so much, for so long. I mean, they had no Alfonso Davies. They just look at what they did. They beat the U.S., and they just 2 0 their way through. They went down the hostile environments, and that's the number one complaint that I, or, I get the comment I kept getting. Oh, Canada is not going to succeed. When I said, "Why?" Because Canada, they, they haven't, you know, they had a lot of home games. You know, they haven't been down the away games, and yet, oh, look what they're doing now. They went to Honduras. They went to San Pedro Sula. They beat them two zero. Jonathan David with a chip shot, and then Tejon Buchanan assisting an own goal. Then they come back to Hamilton up here, beat the United States. Where everybody's like, "Oh, that ain't happening. That ain't happening." If anything, they get a tie. They beat the U.S. Kyle Lahren opens the scoring in the seventh minute, and then in the ninety-fifth minute, uh, the Canadian—I mean, the soccer equivalent of a of a, of a hockey empty netter—was um, uh, it uh, Samuel Adekube just runs in and just hits hits it past Turner. They win two 0 and now look at tonight. They go down the uh, El Salvador Estadio Cusquetlan, which another hostile environment in another place where they have historically not succeeded. They open the scoring. With um the, with the one of the funkiest goals I've ever seen, but who cares? A goal is a goal is a goal, and then once again, Jonathan David with a hockey equivalent of a of a uh, open netter, a Canada equivalent or a soccer equivalent, and then buries it two zero. What else? What what more do you need from this team to prove that you that they are legit? Canada is not a fluke. Canada is legit, and I mean that's I don't I don't know what else to say. I mean. This team is just proving everybody wrong, and they keep proving everybody wrong. They're breaking all these historical historical barriers and whatnot. I mean, they're going down the uh, hostile environments and winning. They're grinding their way out. Like, tonight's game was not pretty, but they still got it done. It was a good old concave gridded out win. I mean, what what more could you ask from this, from this team? Without one of their, obviously, one of the Hallmarks players, Alfonso Davies, you know, everybody else steps up. I mean, what more can you what more can you want from that? It's like their only games remaining are this. So they gotta go to Costa Rica, and then they have to they get Jamaica at home, and then they gotta go to Panama. I bet haters are gonna be like, oh yeah, they're gonna really just stumble and choke there, even when Alfonso Davies comes back. I mean, yeah, I know they got two players suspended, but are you kidding me? Just give this team credit already. I mean, look what they've already done. As I said, do I have to repeat it again? Just look at the look at where they're at right now. They're running the table. They're running the whole Concav League right now. I mean, it's Canada's world, and everybody else is living in it right now. I mean, I don't know how to explain that. Canada right now is as as it stands, ninety nine point nine percent chance of qualifying for Qatar. Unfortunately, they couldn't clinch tonight because they needed the U.S. to lose. They needed Jamaica to either tie or take a couple points away. And they needed a couple, I think they needed Mexico to beat Panama, which they are beating Panama, but they needed a couple other results to fall in their favor in order to do so. And unfortunately, it's not doing that, but who cares? Canada got three points. Three points! Canada! They got three points, and they got nine points. I mean, what more do you? What more could you ask for from this team, from Le Rouge? They're proving everybody wrong, and they keep proving everybody. Now, before I even get into that, I'm just, let's go ahead and talk about the game before I get off, really off topic. So in this one, Canada started the starting lineup with Atiba Hutchinson, Milan Boyan, Samuel Adekube, Stefan Nistakio, which, by the way, welcome back. I think he sat out against the U.S. By the way, they won also without him against the U.S. If you need a reminder for that, for the haters, Liam uh, Miller, Junior Hoylet, 
Donnell Henry, he's also going to be suspended, unfortunately, due to yellow card accumulation. I'm going to talk about Jonathan David, Jonathan Osorio, Richie Larea, and Scott Kennedy. I mean, starting a good starting lineup. You had Tejon Buchanan and Kyle Laren on the bench. I mean, come on. I mean, this is too good to be true. Then we go to the game breakdown. 19th minute, Jonathan Oso down the sideline to Sam Kube to Jonathan David with a shot. And is blocked by a Salvadorian keeper, uh, Karabatis. By the way, um, Karabatis, there's a story on him. And a few stories before I even get to this. A, they, the main Salvadorian keeper picked up an injury before the game. And so Karabatis is the backup keeper. And But, I mean, that's unfortunate for Salvador. But what can you do? Also, Salvador was really, really thinking about not playing this game. As many players refused. They're going with a political situation there. But they still played. And I credit them for playing just even where they're currently at in the position of the table. So, good job to them. But as of today, Honduras and Jamaica have officially been eliminated from um, World Cup contention. So, unfortunately for those, better luck in 2026 whenever Canada, U.S., and Mexico host it. But, um, hey, I don't know what to say about those two, but I'm here to talk about El Salvador and Canada. But, kudos to El Salvador for actually playing this game. I was really surprised when someone tweeted out they said yeah Salvador is really you're not playing this game and I was like no you can't be serious they're gonna forfeit like this and thankfully it didn't they played and we're about to go and finish breaking down this so in the 21st minute Stefan Ustakio with the free kick and yet another save by Karabatis and he stood on his head for the majority of the first half you know in the 26th minute Junior Huelet with a strike and yet another save by Karabatis and he's still standing on his head I mean even the backup keeper still giving Canada some trouble and keep in mind, Canada's at a hostile place, you know, a place where they have historically never done well, never succeeded. And, I mean, it's just a tough place to win, you know. So, it is what it is. But 30th minute, uh, Dominguez to Bonilla for El Salvador, or Bonilla. Uh, Dominguez to Bonilla for El Salvador, but he, uh, he tries to head it on frame, but it goes just wide. He's pretty sure he wants that one back. And that's pretty much the only kind of major threat from El Salvador that's really of significance this game so far, especially in this half. You know, but then one minute later, unfortunately, for Donnell Henry, he picks up a yellow card, meaning he's suspended for the next game against Costa Rica. And for me, was this yellow card really a yellow? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I think it was, many people say it was a flop from Salvador. And, I mean, but for me, the foul didn't look yellow card worthy. So I personally think that was a bit harsh, but fine, okay. I mean, you're just throwing another another wrench in Canada's thing, which I'm pretty sure they're still going to find a way to maneuver around in Costa Rica. So, hey, you can only throw so much at him. Now, 40th minute, David finds himself with a shot, but it whistles wide of the net. So close to Canada for breaking through. And then we get to halftime, where the first half overall, given that they're on the road in a hostile environment, in a place they've historically never done well, yada, yada, yada. Canada, um, I mean, they've, they look decent. Although, they just couldn't finish their chances. But, I mean, you got to credit, once again, the El Salvadorian keeper. And, but Canada, um, I know many people are going to say they didn't look like they did against the U.S. And, you got to keep in mind, though, give, I'm gonna, I am going to give them some leeway here. Um, they played six games. I mean, they played three games already, you know, in the span of, keep in mind, they're playing three games in the span of seven days. So, it's three games in the span of a week. And, um, you know, that's, that's really, really tough on the legs and so you can see some tired legs and a little bit of sloppiness at times out there given that it's on somebody else's turf so I mean but hey what could you do but then um yeah I mean other than that I mean maybe they'll wake out of it let's see if they can turn it around in the second half and the second half for the most part it just it's it's still sloppy not much has changed you can see tired legs you know they show it's been a long week you know they're both emotionally drained you know they had to emotionally kind of in a way, forget the win about the USA. You know, that way they didn't drop points here. And it looks like they successfully did that. Did that. But I want to go to the 66th minute because what in the world happened here? Atiba Hutchinson scores. I mean, the shot takes a deflection off the post, off Zavaleta, off the uh, keeper, and off uh, Hutchinson and into the back of the net. I mean... This is by far arguably one of the, are going to be the goofiest goals that you've ever seen in your entire life for Canadian soccer. I mean, it's 1-0 for that hoosh, but can we just take a moment to look at how this goal happened, how funky it is? 
I know many people are going to say, luck, luck, luck. I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, it is luck. But and at this point, Canada, you're on the road. Take anything you can get. I'm pretty sure luck, skill, I don't know, chance, however you want it. It's a goal, a goal, a goal is a goal is a goal, right? No matter how funky it is. It can be a toe ball. It can be a uh, back heel. It can be a bike. I mean, it doesn't matter. If, if it goes into the back of the net, it goes into the back of the net. And that's exactly what happened here. I don't know how exactly happened. I don't know how the physics of that happened. But I just know that Hoosier on the board won nil. And then we jump all the way down to the 90th minute where Stanley Radicube gets a yellow card. And he's suspended for the trip to Costa Rica. This foul was a tactical foul from him. So the unfortunate that he was already on a yellow card from, I guess, the U.S. game. But, um, I mean, hey, it he was a smart foul. But... You know, to prevent Salvador from really get, getting a tying goal or getting on a breakaway. And then the 93rd minute, so third minute stop of time, El Salvador sends a ball in from a free kick, and Milan Borjan has to come up huge because this ball is rapidly dipping. And if he didn't see it, it would have went into the back of the net. And this would have easily been a, a, a just a, a momentum slammer for Canada because El Salvador would have somehow managed to salvage, salvage a point after this. So good thing Milan Borjan said, no, not today. And he came up huge. And so... That's just huge for him. You can't really, you just can't really just say how you know. Of course, he had to make that huge save, right? Just like against the USA in the forty-third minute, he made that one-hand punch save to keep USA off the board and keep momentum from shifting to them and perhaps turning into something different. And then, li literally, one minute later, the Salvador is literally doing what the US did. They're trying to throw the kitchen sink at Canada. Jonathan David has time and space. He runs about, I'm guessing, seventy-five yards, maybe sixty-six, but seventy-five being lenient. He runs anyway. He runs a super long distance down the field and starts out the good old Canadian counterattack stuff. Just just himself, uh, himself, him and him. <laughs> um, just like the U.S. game, this is the Canadian equivalent, the soccer equivalent of hockey, where you just ice the game away, put put it in the empty net, and you just secure the three points. And he does that. I mean, he puts it past the keeper. Nobody around him. Day, time, years. He has eternity to shoot, and he does so. And now it's 2 0 Lahuja. Surely it's three points for them. And it is the end of the match. Canada gets three points! Canada! And by far, they're looking like they're going to Qatar now. And this is a massive three points to close a nine point window for Canada and Lahuja. And this is history. Anything you see, this whole entire run, this whole entire window was historical. You go to San Pedro Sula, you pick up a big win there, a place you haven't won in, in years. And then you beat the U.S., which in a World Cup qualifying, which you haven't also done in years. And now you beat El Salvador, and El Salvador, which you haven't done in years. I mean, <laughs> come on. I mean, there's just a lot. There's just too much history being thrown around here for you not to just give this team credit. And so with that, I'm going to go to the stats. I really want to talk about the stats. El Salvador had seven. Canada had 15. Way more shots, obviously. Only two of the shots were on target for Salvador, while five of the 15 for Canada, so 33% to whatever two out of seven is for Salvador. Either way, Canada had way more shots on target. 51% possession to 49% possession. Salvador had slightly possession. 359 pass completed to 349 pass completed, all about roughly equal given the possession. 76 pass accuracy to 78 pass accuracy. Um, 17 fouls apiece. Two yellow cards apiece, no red cards apiece, two offsides apiece, and six corners to 11 corners for Canada and Le Rouge. And then, most importantly, we need to go look at the, where this puts this Canada at the final end of the live table, which, as I'm recording this, Mexico's playing Panama, and it's currently 1-0 Mexico, which is good for Canada, definitely, because it keeps Panama away from trying to get to those top three spots, as well as even the U.S. I mean, this is a good result for the U.S., because... I'm pretty sure, given now the U.S. won, which I'm going to be making a video of them after this one, the U.S. won, and I'm pretty sure they want Panama to, and want Mexico to lose, or want Mexico to win too, so that way they can keep things less contested. But if we look at the table, it's still Canada just running away with this team. They run the table. They're a running shop. Um, seven wins, four draws, a still undefeated, no losses, 25 points, and then we go to second place in the U.S. Six wins, three draws, two losses, 21 points. And then as it stands, third place, Mexico, uh, as it stands, six wins, three draws, two losses, also with 21 points. U.S., by the way, leading on goal differential. Panama, fourth place still, with five wins, two draws, four losses, 17 points. 
And then in fifth place, we have Costa Rica with four, four, and three. So four wins, four draws, three losses, 16 points. They're not far behind. They're still obviously in the conversation for the World Cup, given how they can still take a fourth place spot. So them and Panama are competing. El Salvador is still in six. Um, I think by giving, I mean, the, unless people choke, their qualifying might be officially done. Um, they had three wins, um, six draws, it looks like. And uh, no, no, no. Mm -mm, I got that all wrong. Two wins, three draws, and six losses with nine points. Yeah, no six draws there. Jamaica, as I said, is basically being eliminated with Honduras. Um, one win, four draws, and six losses, and seven points, and seven. And then dead last, after the United States, of course, beat them. It's Honduras with still no wins, three draws, and eight losses, and only three points. So obviously Jamaica and Honduras are going to be playing a little bit loose, which for Canada, what this means next window is um, just, I know they play uh, Jamaica, it's home. So hopefully it's here at BMO Field in March so I can get tickets, and hopefully tickets are not going to be dramatically expensive as they've been recently. Because, I, I, boy, I just wish they go back to how they were in September when they were relatively cheap. Even then, they were still expensive. But I just wish they can go back. I mean, I heard the good old days were like $20 or even just $30 for a ticket. Now it's 90 or 120 you're, So you're basically paying as much for a Raptors game. Or, a, you know, not even a baby, baby, almost a Leafs game for just to see Canada play. I mean, for me, it's, it's just, dang, come on. I mean, if profitizing that, I mean, I'm going on a little rant here, but profitizing the ticket sales is not the way to go and not the way to get support at home for Canada. So if I were Canada, I would lower the ticket sales if you want to have more support and have more people enjoy the game at these venues. So, hey, I, I'm, I'm not them. They do them. And I'm here to just talk about the game. And before I do so, I'm just one. I had to get that off my chest. But going back to that, I mean, Canada, yeah, they just basically – for the entire window, they just tooled their way through. You know, they were patient. You know, of course, they would put their dukes up. And then whenever they wait to strike, they stroke at the rope moment. And look where it got them. Nine point. Flawless. A Canadian classic. Whatever you call it. It's beautiful. Canadian perfection. I mean, what more? And as I said many times, what more do you want from this team? I mean, this team basically just proved. I mean... They go down to El Salvador, they basically just, I mean, they don't, I don't want to say they owned them, but they played smart. They didn't shoot themselves in the foot. Yes, it was sloppy, but it didn't cost them, and they got what they want. I mean, they didn't get what they deserved at the end, which rightfully a win and three points. I mean, I just don't understand how people can continue to hate on this team. I mean, I know I'm supposed to be talking mostly about the game, but... What more? What can I talk about? I mean, Canada just did everything they were supposed to do. So, I mean, I don't know what else to do. I mean, besides this, and just talk about the overall window. Canada just, just, without Alfonso Davies, without a few other players, they were perfect. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. And then for the haters, I don't know how much more longer you can keep hating on Le Rouge. I mean, they're just doing everything they have to do. I mean, it's just perfect. I mean, I... It just blows my mind how people can still hate on this team. Like, people saying, oh, Canada is just having, they're just, just, just a fluke run. Oh, oh they're going to be bad. They're going to be bad in 2026. Ah, just don't even, just don't even ignore those people. I mean, don't even respond to those people. It's just like, I don't even know what they're talking about. Just what I, from what I'm seeing right now, Canada is looking like a top contending team in CONCACAF. And also a World Cup qualifying team, and thus going to the World Cup guitar. I don't know how else to put it. And so, once again, I mean, all I can say is, haters, come on, speak up. I can't hear you. You know, Canada got nine points, not three, not six, nine points this window. What more can you hate on with this team without their best player? That's just my biggest question to the haters. And you guys, I mean... Yeah, you guys, if you know the answer today, answer that. I mean, you guys tell me why you guys want to, why you guys are not still satisfied with this team. Hey, but overall, going to the game, perfect window, perfect game. They 2 0 their way through. They did everything they were supposed to do. They played the cards in the right, everything right. And look where it got them.
top of the window, they're running shop still, and what more can you need to critique this team, honestly, for this game? I mean, yeah, it was a little sloppy, but at the same time, they made history winning at someone else's place in CONCACAF, which is not easy to do. I mean, that's all I can say for this one. But Canada, of course, getting the three points, a nine-point window. Like, obviously, this is a huge window for them, and they close it out. One more window to go. I say if they beat Costa Rica, if things maybe things can mathematically align in their favor, and they can officially... And we can and we can officially officially say that Canada will be in the World Cup, but until then, just be happy with this nine point window. We should be ecstatic, especially with all our fans with Davies. But my word, what more could you want from this team? And that's basically all I gotta say for this one. And yeah, if you guys like this video, make sure you like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about it, and also tell your friends that Hooge gets not three, not six. Nine points in this window without Alfonso Davies. And tell your haters, what more could you want from this team?